Hello everyone, today we're going to go through the process of updating the Happy Model Express LRS ES24TX Lite module. This is the module that comes uh, with for the Jumper T Lite, excuse me. And we're also going to flash an EP2 receiver. The EP1s and EP2s both have uh, Wi-Fi on them, so we'll be doing Wi-Fi updating in those two cases. Uh, with the PP1, uh, you can use Betaflight pass-through or other methods. I'm not going to go into that right now because it just seems like the EP1 and the EP2 should be the most popular receivers, especially if you're a micro guy. The EP2 with this ceramic antenna, you get still great range. You get the uh, fast response, the fast packet rates. You get everything you need. Now, we've already got a video on updating OpenTX to a nightly to get the packet rate to 500 hertz. So if you haven't seen that, I'll go ahead and link it down in the video description. Yeah, you can watch that and all its glory. So the first thing that we're going to do is update the TX module. And we are going to use the Express LRS uh, configurator to do that. But to do that, we need to get up to the desktop. And as you can see here, this is the Express LRS uh, wiki pages. Uh, and this is the configurator setup. So we need to download um, the one we need in our particular case. Uh, we are going to, well, for me, not in our particular case, because I don't know everyone who's watching this, uh, we're going to download the EXE file for a Windows-based computer. That's the one you'll download and you'll install it. And then when that is done and launched, you'll have the Express LRS configurator right here up here. So as you can see, this auto-populates. You may have to update this configurator at some point in time. Note that I'm running 052. Uh, you may need a different version for whatever your reasons are. And as you can see here, we've got uh, various releases and release candidates. Right now we're at 1RC8, and that is the one I'm going to be working with today. I'm going to go ahead and select our target. So we're using Happy Model stuff. And we're going to go all the way down here. Happy Model, 2.4 gigahertz. And we want to make sure we're doing the TX. So just as the product says, ES24TX. 24 is the 2400 gigahertz. Uh, and TX is the module. And we're going to update it via Wi-Fi. So I select that. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select all these options. You may have different purposes. So it's always important to consult with either the Discord or the Wiki pages for ExpressLRS and read about these things to decide if it's something that is for you or not. Uh, could depend a little bit. And if you're using this on any other radio or hardware, you definitely want to uh, check. And also note that I am using a binding phrase. So you can skip that or not have that. It, it I don't know why you would, but if you still wanted to go through the process of powering the receiver on multiple times in order to skip the binding process, uh, you have to take this out. Uh, you can't have the binding phrase. So you won't get a binding procedure if you're using a binding page. So don't expect that. It uses this binding phrase to communicate between the receiver and the transmitter. And then it it's a broadcast. So they see each other, then they link up. Also note that this is not secret. It's just like any other wireless networking sort of broadcast message. It can be picked up on others. So don't use things like your social security card uh, number or your mother's birthday, what have you. It's not secret. Don't use a secret thing. So we're going to build, and this can take a while, especially if it's your first time. It'll go through a, a process of maybe even downloading other components that you might need to build your particular hardware. And then you're going to see the log file here kind of build up over time. Uh, we can no longer see the uh, progress bar, but you see it's already done. In my case, because I've done this several times, it's already done. And it opens this window for us. And probably the most important thing to do is to rename it. We want to make sure we get the name correct. So in my case, again, it is the ES... 24TX, you could even put happy model in front of that. And I'm going to put RC8 in the name as well. So I know what release candidate it is. And that way, when I go back and I look at this firmware, I know exactly what I've got. And then I'm going to move it into a directory. You'll want to keep track of this directory for your own purposes. Now, instead of going back and leaving the ExpressLRS configurator, I'm going to go back and I'm going to build the firmware file for my receiver as well. So I go back to the target selection here, and I've got the EP2400RX. That is my receiver that I'm going to be using. And note, it doesn't say EP2. EP1 and EP2 are essentially the same. They're using the same chipset. It's just a different antenna on those 
two particular ones. So I'm going to select Wi-Fi. I'm going to use again the binding phrase, the same one I used on my TX. That's important. We need to have it be the same. Obviously, we don't have uh, use diversity because it only has one antenna on here. And again, these are all the different options for our receiver. You can select the same things I'm using, but you may have different purposes. I did change the auto Wi-Fi interval to 30 seconds rather than 20 seconds. Just takes a little bit longer to get to that. That's a personal preference of mine. It gives me a moment to fumble around before it goes into Wi-Fi mode. Like Maybe I forget to turn on my radio. Maybe I can get my radio on in under 30 seconds rather than 20 seconds. So that's why I've chose that. Really no high reason there. So we're going to go and do a build again. We see the progress bar. Again, if you're doing this for the first time, it's going to take longer. So just have your patient pants on and uh, keep your eagle eyes on the screen and it will go through the log process and compiling everything it's needed for that firmware in order to be able to flash. And here you see that we've already done and it's opened the uh, directory for me here. So we've got um, another firmware here. I'm going to e rename it. So I'm going to put EP2. And I'm going to put that it is RC8. Make sure I can easily read that. And then I'm going to place it in the same directory that I put the other ones in. So the next step is back here on the desk. We need to turn on our radio. You know, make sure you've got a good charged battery and your jumper T light. I've got the amber sound packs on, of course. And I get the test warning because I am running a nightly of OpenTX. So I hit a button and then I hit the long syskey. You need to have the Lua script on your SD card in the uh, script tools scripts directory. So I long press that. And if I go down here to number eight, you see the ELRS and then I hit enter. It comes up down here. We go down, 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 down. And then we go to Wi-Fi update. That's how we're gonna update our file. You can see now it says it go to HTTP 10.0.0.0.1. First thing we have to do back here on the desktop is to connect to that wireless. Now I'm on a desktop, so I've got a wired connection, but you see here I've also got a wireless connection. I'm going to click on the ExpressLRS TX module. Nice name, makes it pretty easy. Go ahead and connect. Now I have seen this timeout and fail. So one of the things that I did was I brought up a command prompt and because it goes to 10.0.1, I can just use the up key and I know I'm getting a response, so I'm good to go there. Now I go back to my browser and I'm going to go to this page, which I already have this in, and I'm going to hit enter. And it comes to our ExpressLRS update page. So we're going to browse to the file that we just put in. Now we wanna make sure we get the TX file. We don't wanna flash a receiver firmware to our TX. So we select open and then update. Now again, we have to be patient, but we don't have any sort of um, on-screen sort of alert to what's going on. As long as the browser indicates that it's working, continue to let it work. And we'll surely get down to the end where it just says update okay, which I now have. So my TX module is now updated. We're gonna go ahead and turn that off for the time being. So I'm gonna back out of this and I'm going to turn this off. The next part is our receiver. And in our case, or in my case, I've had to do this a few times so far. <laughs> it's good practice for me though. I'm going to use kind of a uh, switch and a circuit and I've got a goggle battery out here. It's a little bit cumbersome to get everything on screen, uh, but I'm going to plug in my battery. I've also got a fan here just off screen. So that's gonna cause some audio noise, hopefully not too much, because I do find that these get pretty dadgum warm. Uh, you know, it's very, very small. So heat dissipation is hard for these things. And of course it's got uh, Wi-Fi that it's creating as well as just doing uh, the other things that it does as a receiver. So I want to keep it cool. So bear with me here while I have a fan that, that cools this. So I turn my little switch. Uh, by the way, this was uh, made for me and sent to me some time ago by uh, another viewer. I, I, I apologize, I can't remember who sent it to me. I'm sure if I saw the name again today that it would dawn on me, but in the moment, I can't think of who it is. I think you can buy these from other sources as well. So I've powered on the receiver and now I have to wait until it goes to Wi-Fi mode. Let me turn that around so we can see the LED nice and easy. It'll go to a really flash blinking mode and generally somewhere around 20 to 30 seconds. And when it goes real fast, then we're gonna to connect our wireless on our desktop to the Wi-Fi access point. There we go. Now it's flashing super fast. I'm gonna turn on my fan. Hopefully you can continue to hear this. I'm gonna to try to blow it away from the microphone. 
just to keep it cool. I apologize if you can hear some noise. I have got a youngster who is um, practicing for a dance recital coming up. <laughs> so I found the Express LRS RX module and I'm going to connect to that. Now I have found that sometimes this goes through checking network requirements and this can stay up here for a while. So what I do is I go back to my command prompt and I see if I get a ping response, I am. So I'm gonna to go to my browser. I'm gonna take out the update section. I don't need that. And I'm just going to hit enter. Now I'm ready to flash the firmware on the receiver. I'm gonna to browse to the file. I've got my EP2 file. I'm gonna select open and update. And again, as long as the browser is working, then you're good to go. And we see we already, we have updating success and it says rebooting. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the receiver now. And I'm gonna turn off my fan. Excuse me while I interrupt here. I made it kind of a strong point, but not strong enough in my opinion. The fact that we need to make sure we select the right file when we're flashing really anything. But in my case, because I was rapidly going through my receivers, I had that bag I showed earlier in the video. I had done three before the video, and then I did my fourth during the course of this video. And then afterwards, I did four more. And in two cases, one case, I'm pretty certain I selected the TX or the transmitter external module firmware and flashed it to one of the receivers. So of course that didn't work out so well. In the other case, I think I may have turned off the receiver using my little switch mechanism before it was done rebooting. I can't claim on that second one. I'm very certain about that. That's just kind of my intuition. But my reason for stepping in here is the fact that if you happen to have a flash that goes wrong and it doesn't work, in my case, I got a solid light as soon as I got a power onto the receiver. It would just be solid. It wouldn't flash, nothing. You're not dead in the water. Um, in my case, I had some uh, very good Discord help from Deadbite and PI Engineer. Thank you both very much. I sure appreciate your help really helped in, in such a straightforward and, and and very customer service sort of matter that made you think that you know you had paid some sort of contract on some some piece of technology and these people were here to help you so outstanding support they were able to help me walk through using my ftdi in order to uh, get it into bootloader mode and recover these two receivers and flash them successfully I just happen to have that FTDI adapter around. It's really, you can have a cable or a board or anyways. It connects USB and then some wires or pins, depending upon what kind you have. But just know that it's probably, if you've got a wide fleet of these quads and you're going to be flashing a lot of these receivers, that having an FTDI is going to probably be a useful tool. You can get them for around $10. Uh, the one I got, I think I found for 8 or $9 off of uh, eBay or AliExpress. But uh, I'll put a link to it down in the video description. But know that if you run into problems, there is a, a very good group of people over in the ExpressLRS Discord. And uh, to name them once again, Deadbyte and PI Engineer, they helped me out. And I very much appreciate how they went about it and the help that they provided. On with the rest of the video. Now, because we've used the passphrase for binding, I should be able to turn on my radio. Welcome to OpenTX. Amber tells me, welcome. I'm going to get my warning, hit a button, and without doing anything else, if I power this up, RSSI. Yes, hopefully you heard Amber, RSSI critical. I've got things pretty close together, but I've got a solid LED on our uh, receiver, our EP2. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the flight controller here to USB and bring up Betaflight. Connect to Betaflight here. And I'm going to go to the receiver tab, and you can see... I'm getting all the proper movement on my receiver, even my three position switch, which is a setting that we looked at uh, back at the configurator. So that is really it. I know this feels like a daunting process of having to flash stuff, but it's like a lot of things in this hobby that once we've done it a time or two, it tends to be old hat. Uh, many of you might remember flashing Yes, thank you, Amber. I turned off the receiver. Many of you might remember flashing uh, clean flight or the first time you tried to bind a receiver on how cumbersome that it was. These things in this hobby can be a pain. And if you're not aware of where to buy the Happy Model ES24TX or the EP1 receiver, which is my favorite super micro receiver, weighs, weighs about a gram, less than a gram. It's tiny. You put this thing in a whoop and you wouldn't even know it. 
these are these are quickly becoming some of my favorite hardware that's why i've gone to the effort and making sure that i can kind of show how this stuff works as best as i can probably because i'm going to be using it a lot on uh, future uh, quads. I, I will elaborate here just a touch not to stretch out the video but in order to use these receivers we do need to have a free what we call UART so we need to have an RX and a TX pad uh, available on our board and they do need to be the same so if you're using RX1 we need to have TX1. There are certain all-in-one boards that don't have both an RX1 and the TX1 or an RX1 and the TX or excuse me an RX2 and a TX2 so we need to have both sides the RX side and the TX side free for that particular UART number. So if you have a free RX1 and a free TX2, I don't think that'll work. That's uh, one stipulation about using these receivers, just like with uh, Crossfire and other more exotic receivers than we've seen in the past. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.